Have you ever wondered about the dark corners of history, the ones that are rarely spoken of? Today, we will discuss the dark reality of enslaved individuals in America during the 18th and 19th centuries, and how the dehumanization of slaves progressed, leading to the commodification of their bodies and the establishment of breeding farms. Let's uncover the disturbing practices of forced mating, the mortgaging of slaves as property, and the global trade in bonds backed by the value of enslaved people. Foreign acts passed throughout the 18th century in America gradually eroded and obliterated the personhood of enslaved individuals. This process was particularly evident in the transition from personhood to thinghood, where all rights belonged to the slave owner rather than the enslaved person. As this ideology and culture took root, the buying and selling of slaves became widely accepted without objection from American society. The prohibition of slave importation to the United States lacked genuine altruism. Influential figures in the formative politics of America, such as President Thomas Jefferson, exemplify this. Jefferson, known for owning and fathering six children with Sally Hemings, a woman he enslaved, was well aware of the economic significance slavery held for the South. Rather than leading to the end of slave imports, the decrease in external slave supplies actually drove up the value of domestic slaves. People were reduced to commodities, serving as both the means of production and the product itself. Over time, Virginia, Jefferson's home state, would become the primary producer of slaves, with the sale of slaves surpassing even tobacco as its leading export. As the 19th century unfolded, the transatlantic slave trade approached its conclusion in Britain. Spearheading a movement composed of Quakers and Evangelicals, William Wilberforce took charge of the Committee for the Abolition of Slave Trade. In 1807, the British Parliament enacted the Slavery Trade Act, marking a pivotal shift in colonial Britain and intensifying the push for slavery's eradication in America. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, the economic potential of slave labor and its lucrative output continued to soar. The Deep South and Western regions of America witnessed a surge in the cultivation of cash crops like sugarcane, cotton, and rice, creating a political capital that seemed impervious to challenge prior to the American Civil War. Referred to as King Cotton, this phrase encapsulated the dominant grip slave states had over their abolitionist counterparts in the North, underscoring the profound economic significance of cotton. This conviction convinced secessionist states that the chances of war with the northern states were slim to none. However, amidst the intricate layers of United States history, a remarkable development emerged. Despite the tremendous profitability of slave labor in America, Congress and President Thomas Jefferson openly endorsed calls for abolition starting in 1808. The invention of the cotton engine, coupled with the escalating demand for labor, propelled the cotton industry to new heights. The year 1808 marked a turning point in the history of slavery, as the Prohibition Act was enacted, ostensibly to protect the internal slave market. However, chillingly, instead of curbing the practice, slave owners doubled down on their efforts. Disturbingly, they referred to the breeding of slaves as a natural increase, disregarding the intricate management and collective efforts involved. Within this twisted web of priorities, black women enslaved in America emerged as a rare pillar receiving limited access to free health care, perhaps even being among the first recipients, as Ned and Constant Sublet highlighted in their book, The American Slave Coast. The wombs of these enslaved women became valuable capital, with their fertility strictly safeguarded and prioritized by those involved in the slave trade. Surprisingly, even home medical journals began to circulate among slave owners, providing guidance to aid enslaved women through difficult childbirths. This newfound attention to their well-being was a stark departure from the previous indifference they had faced. However, this care was ultimately driven by the goal of maximizing their reproductive capabilities. Black female slaves were expected to bear an astonishing four to five children, perpetuating the cruel cycle of slavery. It is crucial to acknowledge that the high mortality rate among slaves played a pivotal role in emphasizing the importance of breeding. Slave owners would often advertise a female slave as good breeding stock when putting her up for sale. In this heart-wrenching reality, many women found themselves continuously bartered and incentivized by slave and plantation owners. Some were even promised freedom if they bore 15 children, an offer that exemplified the dehumanization inherent in the system. Shockingly, girls as young as 12 or 13 could be forced into pregnancy, 
giving birth to children who would be forcibly separated from them, destined for lives of enslavement. Under this brutal system, people were reduced to mere commodities. The dehumanizing methods employed were nothing short of soul-crushing. As lives were dictated and controlled for profit, with no regard for the humanity of those caught in their merciless grip. It is more than likely that four to five pregnancies would have been anticipated by the time she was 20 years old since childbearing for female slaves began as early as age 13. The system that relied on enslaved women for reproduction exposed them to a variety of risks. Many argue that the life of a female slave in America would have been a cycle of rape pregnancy and uncared for birth recovery over a matter of just weeks before pregnancy was anticipated again. It was not beneath this slave market of 19th century America to sell women slaves while they were pregnant. Numerous accounts have described masters and slave owners as giving birth to slaves who had no rights and were illegally barred from acquiring any kind of personhood. This system, which forces children out of women, can only be described as rape. Breeding farms held the inequality of white owners being legally protected while their black counterparts had none. Sexual abuse would only be considered one way. Slave accounts revealed that it was common for slave owners to be intrusive in the lives of their subjects. Arranged marriages and forced mating were prevalent in the breeding culture that emerged during the era of slavery, where individuals were treated as property. The conditions under which they were bred resembled those of animals. Testimonies from slaves often referred to stockmen, who were male slaves brought to farms to impregnate female slaves owned by others. This practice of importing male slaves for breeding purposes became a common theme among slave owners, who sought to maximize the production of slaves capable of strenuous physical labor in the fields. One notable study conducted by economist Richard Stooch examined the farms of Virginia in 1860. Shockingly, the ratio of female to male slaves was approximately two to one. The study revealed that the number of females outnumbered males by as much as 300,000. This disproportionate ratio was primarily driven by the lucrative domestic breeding industry. The deeply ingrained racist ideology that underpinned slavery in America allowed slave owners to believe that forcing their will upon their slaves was morally justifiable to many. Furthermore, the owners turned a blind eye to the systematic rape that occurred within the breeding farms as they believed their authority superseded the autonomy of black slaves. House slaves faced the highest risk of falling victim to their master's sexual violence. Consequently, many enslaved women who were capable of bearing children took measures to protect their offspring from the knowledge of their master's wives, fearing the revelation of the true fathers. The extensive practice of factory breeding and abuse was solely driven by the desire to maximize profits, including those involved in the slave trade. There were instances where slave traders openly acknowledged the profitability of their breeding farms, with one Virginia slave trader proudly stating that enforced breeding policies had enabled him to sell 6,000 slave children in a single year. Thomas Jefferson, who is often attributed with boasting about the financial gains from the birth of black children in Virginia, claimed that the capital in the state increased by 4% annually as a result. Once people were reduced to mere property, the slave trade industry flourished and expanded rapidly by the mid-1,800 ass. Estimates suggest that the worth of the South's slave trade reached an astonishing $4 billion, surpassing the national income derived from gold, silver, currency, and even southern farmland. Slavers managed to make slaves more valuable than anyone could have imagined. Remarkably, the slave trade during the early decades of the 1800s transformed slaves from mere property to securities. While the dehumanization and commodification of individuals are well documented in history books, the legal aspects of turning people into property have received comparatively less attention. The stomach-turning consequences of this transformation may explain why it has been less explored. In the 1830s, slave owners sought to generate more capital in their states and discovered a method through exploiting the lack of legal status that slaves possessed. They achieved this by mortgaging slaves to banks, which were established in various southern states, including Louisiana and Mississippi. Slaves were treated as properties and mortgaged to these banks. These mortgages were then bundled into bonds that could be sold globally. This meant that individuals worldwide, even in countries where slavery had been outlawed, were profiting from bonds backed by the value of enslaved people. The dark and unsettling history of slave breeding farms is a painful reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink.
The reinforcement of profit accounts, the reduction of people to property, and the exploitation of legal loopholes to commodify human lives are haunting aspects of our past. Let us learn from this history and strive to create a more just and equitable world today. How much do we really know about the untold stories of African slaves in the depths of American history? Enslaved Africans were bred on farms, which served a grim purpose in the history of America. Reduced to mere commodities, they were denied the most basic human dignity. How did the slaves survive on these insane breeding farms? Let's find out the truth behind horrendous breeding farms that will make your stomach churn. The African slave trade was a devastating chapter in human history that lasted for several centuries. It involved the forcible capture, transportation, and enslavement of millions of Africans who were then transported to various parts of the world to work as laborers under brutal conditions. The trade primarily occurred between the 16th and 19th centuries, reaching its peak during the 18th century. The key regions involved in the African slave trade included West Africa, where many Africans were captured and sold by local African rulers and traders. The major European powers, such as Portugal, Britain, France, Spain, and the Netherlands, played a significant role in organizing and profiting from the trade. The main motivations behind the slave trade were economic exploitation and the demand for cheap labor in European colonies. European powers sought to maximize profits from their colonies by utilizing enslaved Africans on plantations, mines, and other industries. The slave trade was driven by a desire for wealth, as well as the belief in racial superiority and the dehumanization of Africans. Additionally, European powers competed with each other for control over colonies and trade routes, further fueling the demand for enslaved labor. The trade had devastating consequences for African societies, resulting in widespread loss of life, disruption of communities, and the intergenerational trauma that continues to impact descendants of enslaved Africans today. Breeding farms, defined as specialized facilities dedicated to the controlled reproduction of enslaved individuals, served a grim purpose in the history of the Americas. These farms were specifically designed to maximize the production of slaves for the purpose of sale and distribution throughout the region. The primary objective was to increase the number of enslaved individuals, transforming them into profitable commodities. Several factors contributed to the establishment of breeding farms. Firstly, the demand for labor in the expanding agricultural industries, such as cotton and tobacco, necessitated a constant supply of enslaved workers. Additionally, the profitability of the slave trade encouraged slave owners to invest in breeding operations, as they could generate substantial profits from selling enslaved individuals. The prevailing ideology of white supremacy further justified the dehumanization and exploitation of enslaved people, including their use for breeding purposes. Geographically, breeding farms were distributed across the Americas, with notable concentrations in the southern United States, the Caribbean, and parts of Latin America. These regions, characterized by extensive plantation economies, provided the ideal conditions for the establishment of breeding operations. The enslaved individuals on these farms endured unimaginable suffering, as they were forced to produce offspring who would perpetuate their own enslavement. On breeding farms, the enslaved Africans endured a horrifying existence, marked by unimaginable cruelty and suffering. The inhumane treatment they endured is difficult to fathom. Firstly, these farms were notorious for subjecting individuals to harsh physical and psychological abuse, as their lives were reduced to mere commodities for profit. Whippings, beatings, and other forms of brutal punishment were all too common. The living conditions on these farms were deplorable. Overcrowding was rampant, with cramped quarters that offered minimal space for the captives. The lack of sanitation and proper hygiene led to rampant disease and unsanitary living conditions, further exacerbating their misery. The constant threat of illness loomed over their already burdened lives. Perhaps the most heart-wrenching aspect of breeding farms was the systematic destruction of family units. Enslaved Africans were forcibly separated from their loved ones, tearing apart the bonds of kinship and subjecting them to a life of perpetual grief and loss. Additionally, they were often coerced into forced unions, disregarding any sense of personal autonomy or emotional well-being. Enslaved Africans on these farms lost all sense of agency and personal identity. Reduced to mere commodities, they were denied the most basic human dignity, leaving lasting scars on their psyche.
The trauma endured on breeding farms left lasting imprints on the minds and bodies of enslaved Africans. The psychological wounds inflicted in this dark chapter of history continue to affect their descendants, reminding us of the enduring legacy of such cruelty. Slave owners had strong economic incentives to engage in breeding enslaved Africans. By breeding slaves, owners could increase their workforce without incurring additional costs associated with purchasing new slaves. The offspring born on breeding farms became the property of the owner, thereby ensuring a constant supply of laborers. This allowed slave owners to expand their operations and increase profits without significant capital investment. Moreover, breeding farms provided a way to meet the high demand for slaves in regions where the slave trade had been banned or restricted. Breeding farms were highly profitable enterprises. The continuous reproduction of enslaved Africans resulted in a steady supply of slaves that could be sold for considerable profits. Slave traders and owners recognized the financial potential of these breeding operations, referring to them as lucrative investments. The financial gains made from breeding farms were often reinvested in other ventures, such as land acquisition, infrastructure development, or expanding agricultural operations. The profitability of breeding farms contributed to the growth of the plantation economy in the South, solidifying the region's reliance on slave labor. The existence of breeding farms had a significant impact on the slave trade and the overall plantation economy. The constant supply of slaves from breeding farms fueled the expansion of the domestic slave trade, as slaves were bought and sold between different regions in the South. This internal trade in human lives generated substantial profits for slave traders and contributed to the economic prosperity of cities like New Orleans, which became major slave markets. Additionally, the increased availability of slaves from breeding farms facilitated the growth of large-scale plantations, particularly in cotton-producing regions. The profitability of these plantations was intrinsically tied to the exploitative system of breeding farms, solidifying the economic foundation of the antebellum South. Despite the harrowing conditions on breeding farms, enslaved Africans exhibited remarkable acts of resistance. They refused to be dehumanized and fought back against their oppressors in various ways. Some engaged in acts of sabotage, damaging property, and disrupting daily operations. Others covertly taught each other to read and write, empowering themselves with knowledge and challenging the oppressive system. Escape attempts were also prevalent as enslaved individuals risked their lives to seek freedom. Enslaved Africans demonstrated extraordinary resilience in the face of adversity. They formed tight-knit communities and supported one another through solidarity. On breeding farms, cultural traditions and practices were carefully preserved and passed down through generations. Despite attempts to erase their identity, enslaved individuals held onto their languages, spiritual beliefs, music, and storytelling creating a space where their heritage thrived. These acts of cultural preservation were acts of resistance, allowing enslaved Africans to maintain their sense of self and dignity. The acts of resistance by enslaved Africans on breeding farms played a significant role in shaping the abolitionist movement. Their unwavering determination and defiance against the institution of slavery inspired abolitionists to join the fight for freedom and justice. The narratives of resistance, shared through abolitionist literature and speeches, exposed the brutality of slavery and challenged the prevailing narratives of its necessity. The abolition of slavery in the mid-19th century marked the end of the cruel practice of breeding farms. The tireless efforts of abolitionists and the growing moral consciousness of society eventually led to legislative measures to dismantle the institution of slavery. With the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 and the ratification of the 13th Amendment in 1865, millions of enslaved individuals gained their freedom, including those who had suffered on breeding farms. This momentous shift in American history brought an end to the explicit commodification and systematic exploitation of human beings. However, the legacy of slave breeding farms left lasting effects on African American communities. The forced separation of families and the brutal treatment endured by enslaved women in these farms created profound psychological and social scars. Many African American families today struggle with fragmented genealogical records and a sense of disconnectedness due to the deliberate disruption of familial ties during the era of slavery. The trauma inflicted on generations of African Americans through the institution of breeding farms continues to reverberate, perpetuating disparities in education, wealth, and opportunity.
The harrowing reality of African black slaves forced into breeding farms is an unsettling reminder of humanity's darkest chapters. The sheer cruelty and financial exploitation that fueled this industry are deeply disturbing. It is crucial to acknowledge and learn from this history to ensure it is never repeated.